Hello! Today we're going to talk about standing waves. So we have two goals. First is to just investigate them a little bit. And then we'll spend uh, some time talking about one application of standing waves, which is the physics of musical instruments. And in this video we're going to focus specifically on stringed instruments. We'll leave kind of pipes and tubes to, uh, to class. Okay, so it's kind of important that we understand how things reflect. So if a pulse is kind of moving to the right on a string, for instance, as is shown in the top picture below, then it's going to hit the end of the string and it's going to reflect back in some way. And in fact, this what it does when it reflects is uh, critical to understanding what happens in standing waves, which is critical to important to uh, understanding things like how musical instruments function. And the bottom line here is that when a wave encounters a fixed end, and a fixed end is one that is not free to move around, it's fixed in place, then it comes back upside down. Okay, so it travels down the string to the right, hits the right end of the string, which is tied down so it can't move, and it comes back inverted or upside down. Okay, so let's see this in action. Okay, so we're going to send the... Uh, the pulse down the string. And we're making sure that the right end of the string cannot move. And then you see that when the pulse comes back, it's upside down. Okay, so fixed end, upside down. What happens if you reflect off a free end? So the right end of the wave is of uh, the string is now uh, free to move up and down. And what happens there is it comes back upright or right side up. So we'll see that in action too. Okay, so now we've allowed the right end of the string to move up and down in response to this uh, pulse. And so it does. You note the amplitude at the end in the middle is actually uh, twice the amplitude of the pulse. And so the wave comes back upright. Okay, and this part will be particularly important when we talk about uh, pipes with open ends, because those are like free ends. But strings are generally tied down at both ends. Strings on stringed instruments, at least, are generally tied down on both ends. So we're normally, or for the remainder of this video, we're going to talk about um, waves reflecting off fixed ends and coming back upside down. Okay, so let's talk about standing waves. And so you can produce a standing wave by sending identical waves along a string, for instance, or through a medium, in opposite directions. And the result is a wave that doesn't move left or right. So you've got one wave going left, one wave going right. They're identical, and together they form what's called a standing wave. And if we look at these in terms of equations, then we've got uh, y1 is a sine kx minus omega t. So that minus sign indicates that the wave is traveling to the right. The other wave, a sine kx plus omega t, traveling to the left. And you combine these and do a little math. Then you can actually write them like this. So the sum can actually be written with the spatial part, the kx part completely separated from the omega t part, the time part. Okay, And when you separate them like that, then you get a standing wave, which is what we see here. Okay, So the sum doesn't go left or right, Okay, so it's fixed. Okay, so let's investigate this a little bit. So the spatial part is completely separated from the time part. And that means at certain instants in time where cos omega t equals 0, then y equals 0 for every point along the string. In addition, there are certainly certain x values, so that sine kx equals 0. So at certain x values, the wave is always 0. The amplitude of the wave is always 0. And those points are called nodes. And the really big amplitude points are called antinodes, by the way. Okay. And that's what that says. Okay. And so we see two antinodes 
and three nodes in this picture here, where the in this animation where the wave is uh, is standing there. Okay. Okay. So when you have a wave going one direction on the string, reflecting off the fixed end, it returns upside down. And then these waves interfere with each other. And you can get really good constructive interference only when the wavelength has a special relationship with the length of the string. Okay, so when you get an integer number of half wavelengths exactly fitting in the length of the string, then you get some neat things happening. Lots of just perfectly constructive interference is what happens. Okay, so there's an integer number of half wavelengths, so n here is 1, 2, 3, etc. And if we know that f is v over lambda, and we uh, rearrange that previous equation for lambda, so lambda is 2L over n, we plug that in our equation and we get the uh, special frequencies, what we call the standing wave frequencies, or also known as harmonics, are integer multiples of V over 2L. Okay, so something special about waves with an with, uh, integer number of half wavelengths fitting in the length of the string. Okay, so here are examples of what we call the first harmonic at the top, also known as the fundamental, the second harmonic when n equals 2, the third harmonic when n equals 3. And so the string vibrates back and forth between kind of the outline shown in red and the outline shown in blue. Okay, so there might be one instant where it's totally flat, then it goes up to be the outline in red, then it goes back to being completely flat, then it goes down to be the outline in blue, etc. Okay, so the n equals 1 um, frequency, the top one, known as the fundamental, is the lowest standing wave frequency on the string. And all the higher frequencies, which we call harmonics, are integer multiples of that fundamental frequency. Okay, so let's kind of see how this wave is formed. So we'll see, in fact, how the fundamental is formed. So first we send a wave to the right on the string. And in exactly half a wavelength fits in the length here. It bounces off the fixed end and comes back upside down. Then the wave going left and the wave going right interfere with each other. And of course the wave going left hits the end of the string, which is also fixed, and it flips upside down and gets, gets the wave on the right, wave to the right. And so when you put these two waves together, the wave going left and the wave going right, you get perfectly constructive interference happening. Every once in a while the whole string goes flat, but Generally, you get lots of constructive interference happening, and you get this nice oscillation at the fundamental frequency. Okay, so we'll do this again for the second harmonic. So now we'll fit two half wavelengths in the length of the string. In other words, an entire wavelength fits in the length of the string. Once again, the wave goes down, hits the end of the string, which is a fixed end, comes back upside down, and then the wave going left and the wave going right interfere with each other, and when that wave going left hits the end of the string, it reflects and comes back right, um, it flips over again and becomes the wave going right. And so you get this nice constructive interference happening between these waves. And you get that nice standing wave. Okay, But these are very, very special frequencies. right? You have to have an integer number of half wavelengths fitting in the length of the string. And if you don't have that, then what's going to happen in general is you're going to have lots of destructive interference between your right going wave and your left going wave. Okay, and you won't get a nice big amplitude standing wave on the string. Okay, and after a lot of reflections, in general, you'll have tons of cancellation. Okay, it's because it's a lot easier to make waves uh, cancel out than it is to add. You have to have very sp special conditions happen for them to add just right. Okay, and so here, Again, you see the fundamental, n equals 1, second harmonic, the third harmonic, the fourth harmonic, and it took uh, four times as long at the fundamental frequency for that oscillation to happen as it did for the fourth harmonic. Okay? So the fourth harmonic, you go through four cycles of that harmonic in the same time you go through just a single cycle in the fundamental. You have similar relationships for the second and third.
Okay. And so once again, we're looking at fundamental, the second harmonic, the third harmonic, and these are very special frequencies. Now when you, say, strum a guitar string, you're going to hear a lot of the fundamental, but you also generally hear some second harmonic, some third harmonic, some of the higher harmonics. And when you put all those together, then you hear something that's really a nice sound. If you just simply played a pure sound sine wave, it really wouldn't sound as nice to your ear. Okay, so all musical instruments, when you play them, you get a combination of harmonics, the fundamental and higher harmonics, and that's what makes them sound so good. Okay, so I think that is all for our introduction to standing waves today.